I'm out here trick or treating with my son, my grandson, my daughter-in-law, and my daughter. I do more than just talk sports. Boy, I'm having a ball out here with my grandson. He's trying to open the door. <laughs> Say hi. So now, here's the thing the Allen's contract is up in another year, I believe. I think he got a four year deal. I think he's making a little bit more than 300 grand, about 400,000 a year. Probably a little bit more because his team is always um, winning. So I know he reached all the incentives. So what you, what kind of money you think Jackson State gonna be able to give him? Now they can't give him three, four, five million dollars a year. They probably can't even give him two million dollars a year. Right. So what kind of money? Like, I mean, money plays a factor. Money plays a factor, but I think it only becomes a factor is when your worth is starting to really come into question. We already knew what Deion worth is to the to the uh, Jackson State. Is he's really kind of invaluable. So. It's a lot that he brings to the table that's not even just coaching, as we already noticed. He brings a lot of media, he brings a lot of exposure. I think Amazon got a documentary that he's gonna be in with his team and everything. So he's bringing more than just coaching. A lot of these coaches don't have the the eighth of this man's like personality. So you can't really quantify that with dollars. So if, if he asks for a certain money from Jackson State, he's not gonna get that ever. But at the same time, these other power five schools, they don't, I don't think they want Dion for just as much as like Jackson State wants him for. Mm. I don't think they, as far as, and I'm talking about more so as culture wise and the effect that he has on the on the university yeah, as a whole. Yeah, but the power fives know that Dion will go in your house and he'll get all them five star recruits. Yeah. But, That's what they want Dion for. They know going well when he, when he sit down on that sofa, mm -hmm. that kid go, that, that kid coming with him. That's the whole thing. But so they're gonna pay. They'll pay Prime a nice piece of money. Right. Remember, man has an ego. So Prime, I mean, he making maybe three hundred fifty, four hundred thousand, maybe five with incentives. He he gonna want a little bit more money. Like he gonna want a, maybe a million and a half. That's I think they could do a million, one point two million to pay Dion. They can pull that together for sure. Cause he bringing that to the university. Ah, right, now the Lakers they got a win yesterday and. Uh, why was y'all celebrating like y'all won the uh, NBA Finals? There's all, champagne all in the locker room and everything else. It's all about getting over the hump. At the end of the day, you got to start with one. Once you start with one, then it comes the next ones. You got to understand they just trying to build something. And there's been a lot of things going on. It's LA. Everybody, you know, want to make a story out of every little tidbit or whatever. So now certain things are starting to work. We'll see how it goes with the next game coming up on Wednesday. But... From the start, it looks like things is on the up and up. So we just got to continue keeping that energy and keeping the guys healthy so we can just continue. Now, I know it was Darvin Ham. It's his first win. So they, you know, they, they like Darvin Ham. They want, you know, they want to try to get victories for him. So I understand all that. But the way y'all was celebrating, like y'all beat Boston in the NBA Finals or something. Or beat, or beat the Sixers in the NBA Finals. Last time I think we played the Sixers in the Finals, we did win, right? But um, either way, oh boy. when you come yeah, to think about it, it just takes a while to get some things rolling. And for the Lakers, man, they've just been dealing with so much outside of just playing basketball. And it seems like that's been getting more of the headlines, more so than the team just trying to figure out how to gel, how to get together. Every year, it's always a new team for the Lakers. So you just got to deal with it. New coaching staff now. We putting, we putting the players in position to try to succeed. And now they're buying into the system of what's working. The proof is starting to be shown, so we're just gonna see how it continues to go out. You know y'all not doing nothing. Y'all not doing nothing this year though. You aware of that, right? I see that. Y'all might y'all might be a what, what you call that, the play in or something like that? Y'all not playing. doing that. All we gotta do is just hit our stride. At the end of the day, the West is very strong, but if we can hit our stride and get to where we gotta get to. How you gonna hit your good. stride when your boy Anthony Davis every time he went up and down the court, he, he grabbing his back. Well Anthony Davis is dealing with something mentally. I don't know if it's starting to become physical at this point. Because sometimes when you have injuries, you tend to think about them a little bit more than um, 
you know, little things. He was, you know, he's been having back issues. So now he moved a little tenderly, a little gingerly and stuff too. Not saying he ain't a top player when he's healthy, but I think this man is healthy. He's just playing off of a mental thing, man. You gotta hit some, some blocks. Oh no, he's grabbing his back. And talking about Joker's grabbing their back, Ben Simmons grabbing his back too. Well, Ben Simmons don't put together the type of uh, games that Anthony Davis does. So, so Ben Simmons needs to figure out something else to worry about. Because right now, my man, don't even shoot layups. Um, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. When you think and they getting, they getting, then they getting on Kyrie because he says something, but he's not. He, he was, well, they, they they like to they like to clown Kyrie and, and try to make him out to be someone he isn't. And then when he explains his point, they bypass everything they I know, say. I know. So you can't really, you know, you can't really take take what's going on, man. Certain guys in the media, especially in the NBA and the NFL and these different markets, they tend to kind of, you know, blow up certain things that don't need that type of uh, attention. When the guy's been playing lights out for the Nets. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Say thank you. Grab it like this. <laughs> no, hold the bag. Hold the there bag. You there you go. You got it? You want to put it, put it there? All right, happy Halloween, man. Happy Halloween, happy man. Thank you. Man. Thank you. All right. A little plane pilot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Have a good one. I guess North Carolina ain't tea. So the Campbells filling themselves. They went on some kind of little scoring barrage. They was up 28 to 10 after the first quarter. But that lead would not hold up. Now, for the rest of the game, Campbell got a, they got a field goal in the third quarter. They scored a touchdown. They got seven points in the fourth quarter. Meanwhile, North Carolina A&T, they scored 35 points, and they overcame that 28 to 10 lead to win the game 45 to 38. Now, this person performing at their homecoming show at the concert is Glorilla. She got a big record out right now. Uh, everybody going crazy over it. Well, that uh, demographic from, I don't know, 18 to about 35, they going crazy over it. He's an up-and-coming rapper from Memphis. But my son said uh, the game was great, the atmosphere was great, the homecoming was great. And uh, Campbell, they look, they suffered their second straight loss to a HBCU. Now, Campbell's quarterback, Hodge Malik Williams, he passed for 426 yards. He went off. And two uh, touchdown passes, and he rushed for 56 yards. Now, North Carolina A&T's running back, Beiju Tootin, had a big game. Now, he rushed for 256 yards. Now, he's a sophomore running back. You know, he's from New Jersey. So, um, you know, I'm not shocked that he put in that kind of work. He also scored two touchdowns to help North Carolina A&T come back from that 28-10 deficit to beat Campbell. Yeah, yesterday was a great day for HBCU football and universities. Look, I'm going to talk to these guys later. It's Corner Sports Net.